uh, one of those two gentlemen uh, suggested essentially that we need to purge. Um, we need to purge uh, or go after OANN. Um, we have to go after Newsmax, um, Fox News, and all of this. And I have an interesting take because, and it might, you know, some people might not like it, but I, I, I see a lot of what the talk has been online. And I think some people either don't understand censorship or don't truly understand what speech is not protected. So to me, and I've gave, given my opinion several times, it happens to be nuanced. I do think networks that spew dangerous misinformation and with that dangerous misinformation stoke their viewers to go out and fight on the grounds of this misinformation, I do think they should be held accountable because you have a major, major platform. Uh, if you are a Fox News host, even if you're a Newsmax host, even if you're um, an OANN host, even if you have a YouTube channel with a big following, that's, you have a responsibility. You, you can't just you know, recklessly push conspiracy theories that when you're pushing them, come with you pushing those conspiracy theories are essentially knowingly feeding those conspiracy theories to people under the guise of, we got to fight against this. Newsmax, for months, because they were seeing a huge surge in their ratings, were pushing this election fraud, conspiracy. They were telling their viewers to fight. You are telling angry people you are feeding angry people more paranoia, more conspiracy. And it, it doesn't mean you don't have to say, go to the Capitol, bring your guns, go to the Capitol, shoot some people up. That's not, that's not the only form of incitement. So I don't agree with some on the left who say those people should be protected because if you go after those people, they're going to come after us next. And status quo was just come after. Two days ago, our cameraman, John, was live broadcasting uh, from a peaceful gun, gun rights rally. We had over 6,000 people watching. Uh, honestly, I thought it was really interesting. Uh, the people carrying guns with their military garb were actually saying, we're not, we're not Trump supporters. And they were explaining why they were out there. Even Black Lives Matter people came. I thought it was actually a productive event. Um, but YouTube took it down because YouTube and its algorithm, which is nonsense, it's, it's also humans watching certain channels and making decisions to censor them, said, oh, there are firearms in the stream, so we have to take it down. Well, a week before that, we had 30,000 people watching our live stream from the Capitol where John bravely went in and got incredible live footage. There were guns galore. They didn't take that down. So, yes, censorship is a slippery slope. But this idea that, no, not all speech should be protected. And we need to, just a carpet exemption. Even if people are pushing baseless conspiracy theories that, they are, because a lot of these channels were literally say, we're literally fighting to stop the steal. Well, if you're fighting to stop the steal, which is a BS conspiracy theory, I know a lot of people have been pushing it, but as a journalist, I'm here to tell you there are no facts that support hundreds of thousands of votes being flipped from Donald Trump to Joe Biden. And there never were any facts to support that. And channels that claim, oh, we're just... We're just covering election integrity are full of shit. That's not covering election integrity. That's pushing an evidence-free conspiracy theory. That's what that is. And those channels and, and networks that claim, no, no, we're just, you know, looking into things here. We're just, you know, we care about election integrity. Caring about election integrity overall, that's a good thing. 
there should be a major discussion and coverage on our election machines, which are susceptible to being hacked, which can have votes flipped like that. But that's different than pushing that an election was stolen, feeding that to audiences for months, feeding Stop the Steal for months after, by the way, Jen and I were outside the Philadelphia Convention Center two days after the election where I interviewed Trump supporters who were out there, stop the steal, stop the steal. At 2 a.m., my wife called me. There were two men that drove up from Virginia with a van full of guns ready to shoot up the Philadelphia Convention Center because of Trump and the misinformation, but the media information misinformation. Five people died at the Capitol because Newsmax, OANN, Fox News, uh, Breitbart, conservative media, and frankly, some on the YouTube were pushing this nonsense. Now, I'm not saying they're directly responsible. Obviously, people have to take an action to shoot a gun. But the bottom line is, all of this plays a part. So I do think if you, whether it's a YouTube show or a Fox News anchor or whatever, you have a responsibility Even if you're a commentator, even if you're not claiming to be a reporter, if you want to push conspiracy theories, that's fine. There are plenty of conspiracy channels and a lot of them are great. It's fine that, you know, they're just, this is our hunch and here's why we think. If you want to just be, you know, I tell my audience when I have, when I'm not reporting something, when I'm just saying, here's my hunch, I make clear, I'm not reporting this. I don't have evidence for it. You know, for example, the Flint story that we just broke for The Intercept. I knew about those phone calls way earlier, but I didn't have evidence of them. I just knew they existed. You see, as a journalist, I would have loved to publish in April of 2020 that Governor Snyder as chief of staff and health and health director were on the phone like a bunch of drunken teenagers for two days, back to 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 back phone calls for two days while a deadly bacterial outbreak in Flint's water was going on but I didn't have the documentation. I never, I didn't have the evidence. That's the difference. So to answer your question, do I think some of these outlets should be held accountable? Yes, I do. I do. And I don't think that, I, I do think there are some forms of speech. If you are a public figure, you can't just get away with it. But, and this is the important, but, and my position has frankly been lied about all over the internet the last few days by certain people using a tweet that I sent out on the day of the Capitol attack. I've made very clear, I do not believe, I do not believe Twitter, YouTube, Facebook, Twitch, owned by Amazon, should be the judge, jury, and executioners. For who is inciting violence and who is not. For which live streams could could go up and which ones can't. For which channels should be elevated and which should be suppressed. All of that should not be in the hands of unelected cretins. All of that should not be in the hands of Mark Zuckerberg, Jack Dorsey, Google CEO, Jeff Bezos, who owns Twitch. Because when you give ultimate power for information to unelected people who are financially in bed with the government, then the censorship is not actually about the merits of the content. It's about pleasing advertisers. It's about protecting government secrets. It's about maintaining the status quo. So do I think that there needs to be an independent body in in conjunction with the courts so that if hosts are inciting violence and what I deter, what I consider inciting violence is telling people to fight in this polarized moment, telling people go fight, fight against, fight to stop the steal. That's absolutely inciting violence. These are not stupid people on Fox News. 
These are not stupid people on Newsmax, OANN, and other YouTube channels. They know exactly what they're doing. They know they're not feeding this to people who are going to try and go, go kindly talk to their government and have tea. So forms of accountability, what do I mean by that? Somebody, whether it be the courts, an actually independent body that is not Republican or Democrat, these entities need to be publicly regulated because they are public utilities. Mark Zuckerberg openly said Facebook is like a government. Then it should be regulated because Mark Zuckerberg shouldn't be determining whether Donald Trump could be on Facebook. Jack Dorsey shouldn't be determining whether Donald Trump should be on Twitter. They should not be determining what right-wing channels go, what left-wing channels go, because it is beyond a slippery slope. They will abuse that power, under, and they have, will abuse that power. First, they will come for legitimate white supremacists, extremists, and then they will come for edgy podcasts. Then they will come for Jimmy Dore. Then they will come for status quo. Because the censorship that they, what they want censored most is not white supremacy. What they want censored most is anti-capitalist, anti-war, and anti-corruption. Those three things. So to answer your question, which was long wind, I don't agree that we should just let all everything sit, nothing be censored. I think people that are putting out out there, it's censorship to, to eliminate certain extremist voices don't understand what censorship is. And frankly, I mean, under those people's definitions, really, really dangerous people in the 1930s, 40s, and 50s, like Mussolini, Stalin, Hitler, um, you name it, if they came to rise in today's age, they would say, no, no, you can't censor them. You can't get rid of their channels. Can't get rid of their social platforms. There is a line where people need to be held accountable. But I don't think Silicon Valley should be the ones to do it. That's my honest opinion. Hope you enjoyed that last video. Hop on over to statuscoup.com where you can sign up for our email list and become a member for as low as 5 to $10 a month. Membership is how we grow. That's statuscoup.com slash join. And remember, join our email list so we can grow the revolution with you. Yeah.